Uh, but let's start with the, the issue of guns. Of course, such a serious debate this week. Beto O'Rourke, who's running for president, uh, was on Pod Save America this week. He's now calling for a mandatory assault weapons buyback. Take a listen to what he had to say. Um, the most effective gun control measures have been gun licenses and mandatory buyback programs like they did in Australia. Would you be open to those proposals as president? Yes, and, and I'm open to them right now as a candidate. Absolutely has to be part of the conversation. And if at the end of the day, it, it's going to save lives, if it's going to prevent the kind of tragedies that we saw in El Paso or Gilroy or Dayton or this weekend in Chicago or all over this country on a daily basis, then let's move forward and do it. Mayor Viragosa, when you were in the state legislature, you authored California's assault weapons ban. Don Parada, yes, yeah. I authored uh, the assault weapons ban, a limiting guns to one a month, the purchase of guns to one a month, safe storage, trigger locks. Um, but we need much more than that because if you just have it in California, you can go to Arizona, Utah, uh, or uh, Nevada and buy those guns. And so we need a, a national assault weapons ban. We need to ban bump stocks. We need to address uh, universal background checks, red flag laws. Uh, we, and I do believe that uh, Beto was right, uh, that we should be able to buy back uh, those assault weapons uh, to incentivize people. What do you need an assault weapons for? I mean, it's a, it's a weapon of war. It's not, uh, use, you don't use it to, to hunt ducks. Um, and I think gun licensing is important. You know, to drive a car, you need to drive a license. You need to have a license. Um, you should need a license to, to own a gun, to safely store it, to be able to know how to shoot it and, and the like. And so I think we need a broad cross-section of gun laws in this country. When you look at the number of people we lose uh, to mass shootings, but just to guns every single day on the streets of our country. Michael, uh, is there any of that that, as a conservative, you think you could sign up for? I must respectfully disagree with every single thing my friend the mayor has just <laughs> said. We don't need to look just at the California assault weapons ban. We can look because we did have a national assault weapons ban, and by 2005 we had data in that showed that the national assault weapons ban did not accomplish its goal. It did not reduce gun deaths. And the reason for this is because there's no such category as an assault weapon. All weapons are assault weapons. The term was invented in the 1980s to try to draw a comparison between semi-automatic rifles and fully automatic rifles which are used in the military. We know that every single year more people die because of bats, hammers, clubs, fists and feet than they do because of rifles of any kind including the dread AR-15. You are 22 times more likely to die from a handgun than you are from any kind of rifle including the AR-15. So why would we focus only on this one but, very particular kind of rifle instead of handguns? But statistically since the assault weapons ban went away the number of mass shootings has gone way up. Well New York Magazine disputes that. There was a study in 2014 that showed that the, the lethality and the incidence of those mass shootings has not changed terribly much. And of course, in this country, you are much more likely to die from uh, other sorts of gun incidents. And actually, two-thirds of the people who die in gun-related deaths every year die from suicide. I am in no way discounting that there is a serious problem with violence in this country, and specifically when we're talking about that latter category, with mental health. But there is no evidence uh, that has been presented by any party that any of the gun control laws proposed in the last 20 years would have prevented any of these mass shootings. Gloria. I'd like to share a wonderful quote from Gloria Steinem. How about if we treat every young man who wants to buy a gun like every woman who wants to get an abortion? Mandatory 48-hour waiting period, parental permission, a note from his doctor proving he understands that what he's about to do, a video he has to watch about the effects of gun violence. Let's close down all but one gun shop in every state and make him travel hundreds of miles, take time off from work, and stay overnight in a strange town to get a gun. Make him walk through a gauntlet of people holding photos of loved ones who were shot to death, people who call him a murderer and beg him not to buy a gun. I tweeted that uh, last night. Last week, by the way, so you retweeted it. Yeah, it's a great. You think it's a great? So you and, think that's and it's true? Do you think that's going to happen? Uh, no, yeah. uh, because uh, controlling a woman's body and her choices is more important uh, to a lot of politicians than controlling guns. So where do we go from here? I mean, how do we stop these mass shootings? If, if you don't think it's a gun problem, then what is the problem? Mental health is a huge problem. Obviously, for the last 50 years, we shut down the mental uh, institutions in this country for very good reason, because there were developments in pharmaceuticals. All right, we're going to have to leave it there for now. But up next, we're talking about the 
also contentious issue of immigration, but a bit of fun. Before we go, I did research on all of you to pick out songs for all of you, but we're going to start with Gloria. We're going to go down the line. This break is for you, Gloria. So your daughter, Lisa Bloom, recently on the show, and she brought us this video, which is uh, you dancing at the Hollywood Bowl for your birthday to Nile Rodgers and Chic, matching colors. So we go to break with that song for you, a little Nile Rodgers, and a late happy birthday to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, Gloria. Thank you. Back with more of The Issue Is right after there. More good times ahead. <laughs> One of the president's top immigration officials suggesting a change in the Statue of Liberty's famous poem, Give Me Your Tired, Your Poor, Your Huddled Masses Yearning to Breathe Free. His version, Give Me Your Tired and Your Poor, Who Can Stand on Their Own Two Feet and Who Will Not Become a Public Charge. But does he have a point? Back with our panel, Gloria Allred, Antonio Viragosa, The Daily Wire's Michael Knowles. Michael, does he have a point? Should merit-based immigration be more of a priority for the country? Of course, not only does he have a point, I don't even think he's changing the poem. I think he's explaining what it means because the key there isn't the poor huddled masses. The key is yearning to breathe free. People who want to come here, who want to stand on their own two feet, who want to enjoy this tradition of American liberty. You know, we have the most generous immigration system in the world. We take in over a million people a year legally and then another million illegally probably this year. And there was a poll that came out a year ago that showed the majority of Americans, Democrats and Republicans, want to reduce not only illegal but legal immigration. There are these fears that we are not encouraging assimilation to this country, that we're losing something of our political tradition. Uh, immigration and assimilation are difficult under any circumstances, but when assimilation is not being encouraged, it's virtually impossible. And I think that is a bipartisan anxiety. Look. <laughs> <laughs> you agreed with everything, I assume. The fact of the matter is we have 10 and a half million people here uh, who are living here, who are working here, who are contributing uh, to this country. The vast majority of people that come here come here to work. That's a fact. Um, yes, there are some people that in the course of time need some governmental assistance. Uh, but we know for a fact that t today uh, it, it, the undocumented can't receive that assistance that's one and legal immigrants ha also have some limitations uh, we're focusing on the wrong thing we need to fix this broken immigration system we need to provide a pathway to citizenship for these people every country has a right to strengthen its borders and to for you know to protect its borders uh, the fact of the matter is and you know you, you talk about this issue of assimilation you know German immigrants uh, a century ago uh, assimilated less than Mexican immigrants are today. Uh, you know, that's a fact. You know, what we see in our city, in our, in our state, is, you know, the recent immigrants. But most of the people that grow up here speak the language, have assimilated, see themselves as Americans, and don't know any other country. So this notion that we need to, uh, to address the issue of public charge, uh, that we somehow need to limit immigration. If we want to limit immigration, then we better all have more children. Yeah, right. Because the fact yeah. is, demographically, yeah. Uh, we're, we're getting to the point of Japan and China. We need more people here. But, is it, but isn't immigrants here, even if they're not necessarily getting welfare, they're using education in terms of the schools, they're using police forces, they're, they're going to the emergency room, they're, all things, that's all cost in taxpayers, right? And they're contributing, the undocumented is an example, contribute to our social security and don't get anything back. Uh, the legal, the immigrants who are here legally are contributing, they're working, they're paying their taxes, so they're, they're paying for those services. I'm not saying that we can't address immigration differently than we have in the past. You know, we have a right to do that. But we, we, we need to remember, bring me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses aspiring for that freedom that we talk about. And, 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 and do it in a way that reflects our values as Americans and as human beings. And Gloria, so many different people's families came here as immigrants. Well, exactly. My grandmother came uh, from, I think, Poland or White Russia. She didn't speak any English. She sold apples on the corner uh, to support her children. Uh, my mother came from England. And all of us should think about what our, you know, where we actually came from. And if it had been a merit plan, uh, as suggested by some of the Republicans, uh, it, you know, many of us would not have been able to be here to enjoy uh, the liberty that we enjoy in the United States. And so we should remember that, of course, we need an immigration policy that makes sense, uh, but we don't have one that makes sense now. But I say stop 
slamming the poor, stop slamming uh, with uh, racial slurs often uh, immigrants who come here. And, and some stop so putting children in cages. Yeah. And I mean, separating wait, them from, from their, their mothers, mothers it's, and it's families. It's obvious, though, that That's people exactly weren't right. raising this issue in 2014 when Barack Obama was doing it and when the images that we see today circulating were, were originated. Well, and there, there actually, clearly were a lot of people actually, that probably may have. Yeah. I, was, I was critical. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, uh, look, this isn't a partisan issue. I mean, it's become one, but it, it shouldn't be. It, Ronald Reagan was the last person to pass an immigration reform. Uh, we, need, we should do it, Democrat and Republican working together. I, I believe that we can put something together. Yeah. Unfortunately, they've char you know racially charged this issue. I mean, because look, when you, when you see the as an example, you know, Latinos are only about sixty percent uh, of the undocumented. But where, who do you see getting deported? They go into Latino neighborhoods mm -hmm. disproportionately. They're not going after the visa overstayers who came from, you know, Europe. They're going after the people that they believe come from the S countries that uh, President right. Trump has talked about. And, and that's wrong. And speaking of this issue of sort of targeting the poor, your, your good friend, Ben Shapiro, got into some trouble with some on the left, which happens all the time. For Every, him. It's a daily occurrence. Uh, but, but he said this uh, this week about people that are working a second job to pay the rent. Had to work more than one job to have a roof over your head or food on the table, you probably shouldn't have taken the job that's not paying you enough. That'd be a you problem. In May, 5% of Americans had multiple jobs. 5%. That's really what's bringing down the unemployment rate, is those 5% of workers who have multiple jobs. That's a, that's a you problem? I mean, a lot of people on the left say, I got to do these jobs to pay for my kids, and felt very insulted by that. Well, I, I may end this segment with zero jobs because I work for Ben Shapiro, but I, <laughs> the, po the point he made there, obviously, this seems to be something of a non-troversy, intentionally ginned up, taken out of context by Media Matters, which every single day tries to get Ben taken off of the air. The point that he made is that 5% of Americans work more than one job. Crucially, this is not always the same 5%. I would ask all of us, how how many of us have worked two jobs at one point in our lives? I certainly have. I suspect many of us still do. And when we're talking about two jobs, are we talking about four, two 40-hour-a-week jobs? Are we talking about one 40-hour, one 20-hour-a-week job? How, when was the last time any of us worked less than 60 hours per week? Probably a pretty long time ago. The, the it's insulting. Come on, let's call it for what it is. When I was in my 20s, I was working as a teacher full-time. I was working at night uh, for several nights a week so you with a cerebral jobs. palsy foundation. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then I was trying to earn my master's degree at the same time. And now you're one of the most York. successful people Look, in the country. Here's the point. People who work two and sometimes three jobs to support their families and their children, as I was working to support my daughter, should not be castigated because they are doing it. They should be supported. They should be commended for doing it. It's tough. I don't think they're being and castigated. Don't but but for, to su the suggest, well, she, they could have one job where they'd be earning more. No, I couldn't. That yes, was the you, you best You currently that have I one could. job where you're earning more. I'm talking about then. Right, and, and, because and then, time moves on. And a on. lot of people now are working two or three jobs. And, you know, you can sit in an ivory tower. You can sit as a radio talk show host. Or you and can you can try to like slam those people who haven't made it the way you have who economically but who does that benefit who does that hurt stop using them as some sort of I'll, political I'll, weapon i'll just yeah. make this last matter, last last real quickly we have an economy that's not working for enough people uh, there we are have more people working low unemployment there are more people working today than there were a few years ago true uh, but they're working in jobs where they're barely making ends meet. Wages which is are why, finally rising for the first time in 10 years. Finally rising for the first time in 10 years. But still, there, you know, I think the national uh, minimum wage is $7 and change. Uh, and, that, you know, people need to make more than that. And so uh, I do believe that we need an economy that's working for more people. And I think also when you look at the, the rhetoric on our politics, both on the the right particularly, but even on the left, it has a lot to do with people feel like they're working every day and they're not making it. Yeah. All and right. the Republicans who criticize often will be against raising the minimum wage. How I hypocritical will just point out there are two that? visions of America being presented. The right vision is saying that people, maybe they have to work two jobs at one point, but over the long scheme, maybe we will be able to achieve the American dream. I know a billionaire who raised 11 kids in a double wide trailer. Now he obviously has a billion dollars. And what the left is saying is we will keep you in, in that static point in your economy, in that entry level job, but we'll give you an extra one dollar an hour, vote for us. I don't know if that's what they're saying. Left or right. <laughs> Sorry. All right, we're going to have to stop at some point.